Well, today I thought we'd take on the big one. We're going to take on attachment. I think this is the one subject that if we could master our ability to be unattached, we could master life. You see, as you study attachment, you find that the great sages of all time will tell you attachment is the source of all suffering. The question you got to ask, is that true? Is attachment the source of all suffering? You see, attachment is based on a false belief that if we hold on to this thing or behavior, we will be happy. And it's, it's so interesting, by holding on to something, we're actually imprisoned by the thing we're holding on to. Think about this. Think about you put your hand in to a pickle jar and you grab a pickle and you try to bring your hand out. You're attached to having that pickle and because you're so attached to it, you can't get it out because the pickle in your hand is too big for the opening. It's the same thing that's true in life. What you are attached to, you may think it's giving you great things, you may think it's bringing you happiness, but it's going to prove that it's going to give you a lot of pain. You see, life is a series of events. Don't hold on to them. Let them pass and move on. Move on to the next event. You see, that's the same thing with thoughts. We have thoughts that are circulating through our brain. It's like a ticker tape going through our brain. But what we do is we see that ticker tape and we say, oh, there's a thought. That's a, based on my past. I'm going to hold on to that thought. So you hold on to that thought. And all of a sudden, all thoughts like that, you're holding on to, holding on to, holding on to. And they may be positive. They may be negative. But as you hold on to them, you're stuck with those thoughts. You're stuck living in the past. You're stuck that past thought creating a future that's based on the past. And so you've actually created a loop that you can't get yourself out of. Instead of just really taking every event in life and every event in life, take what you get out of it, have the experience fully, release it, and now move on to the next. What it really breaks down for me is that Attachment is a belief in limitation. Why else would you be attached to something if you didn't believe you'll never have it again? If you really think about it, why would you be attached to having this particular person as your partner? You're so attached that you're jealous. You're trying to control that person. Why would you do that? Because you have a belief that there's nothing better. You have a belief that you don't deserve anything more. Because if you had a belief that you would attract the same person, at least equal to the person you've got, or even attract more, you wouldn't be attached because you knew you would be, be able to recreate that situation. You see, I believe our soul's purpose is to experience of much, as much life as it can. Attachment holds us back from this very purpose to infinitely experience life. When you're holding on to something, you can't move on to something new. And the, I think that's why when we attach, we start to have negative feelings after a period of time. Because isn't being attached the opposite of feeling free? And isn't freedom the ultimate thing that you desire to experience? You see, it's the ego that wants to hold on. The ego wants to be attached. The soul absolutely has no attachment. Why? Because the soul doesn't judge. It is only the ego that is judging. And see, we forget that we are the soul, and the soul has a body and a mind. But we've forgotten that the soul is the thing in charge. And how do we find the perfect balance? That's what we talked about last week, if you remember. The mind, body, and soul connection. You see, when we release our attachment, we set ourselves free. And this, my friends, is the ultimate act of self-love. Self-hate would be the act of putting oneself in prison 
by becoming attached to something. Because when you're attached to something, it owns you. I was having a discussion with my son the other day, and, he, and we were talking about attachment. He said to me, Dad, how attached are you to having this home? And I says, I love our home. Our home is our dream home. It's our home that we created. Mom and I built this home, and we modified it. We have great energy in this home, but I'm not attached to it. I enjoy it. He says, well, what do you mean you're not attached to it? What if you didn't have a home? I said, Steve, I said, last two, three years ago when I went to, went to the Himalayas, we didn't have a home. We were living outside, tre go, trekking around a mountain. There were no bathrooms. We were living in the bare necessities. I was happy. I think happiness is a perspective. And in order to be happy, I think we have to release our attachment. I think attachment is the source of all pain, all suffering. You see, we only believe and become attached when we truly, truly, truly believe in limitation. But more importantly than limitation, we doubt our creative ability. Because think about it. If you knew that you were the creator of your life, you would truly understand that if something left your life, you could recreate it again. So I'm here to tell you that I have as perfect a marriage as I could ever imagine. I've been with my wife. I've known her since, um, I've known her for 51 years. I'm in my 50th year of marriage. I have a magnificent relationship. And people say to me, well, Lee, if Jean left your life, you wouldn't be happy. And I look at them and say, the second it would happen, I would attract someone equal to the vibration that Jean is or more. Why? Because it's who I am. I believe I have the ability to create the experience. I don't believe that the experience of my marriage is just what happened to me. I don't believe that it was luck. I believe that I have consciously created it and that Gene has chosen to consciously create it. And we give each other the freedom by not being attached to what the other is doing. And it's really fascinating as we watch that unfold now with Gene having retired. My day is so busy doing what I love to do in ministry that I'll see her for maybe 10 minutes at lunchtime. Other than that, I see her no more than I did prior to her retirement. And she's not attached to me being present for her because she's got her life to live. Now, she's rediscovering her life, but because she created a great life in the corporate world, she'll create a great life in the retired world. And I don't even like to call it the retired world. I call it the next adventure. Because isn't that what life is? It's the next adventure. The interesting thing about attachment is that when we have an attachment to a person, that sends a clear message to the mind that we're not enough. It says we're not whole and perfect and complete like we are, but rather we need this person to fulfill us, to make us whole and perfect, not realizing you're already that and so are they. But when you're attached to that person, man, you're sending a message to yourself that you are not enough. I can remember, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, when Meatloaf came out with the song, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, I want you, I need you, but I'm never going to love you. I changed the lyrics to I want you, I love you, but I'm never going to need you. I didn't realize it back in 1974, what, what I was saying was, I will not be attached to you but I will enjoy the heck out of you while you're with me. Isn't that what it's about? And you think about that. If I'm not attached to my wife, I'm not worried about her. 
I'm not constantly thinking about her. So when I'm not with my wife, I'm fully able to be present with whoever I'm with, whether it's just me, whether it's with a group of people, whether it's with individuals, because I'm not attached. I become fully present. What I see in the world is that attachment creates needy people. And when needy people form relationships, they will certainly produce conflict as each person seeks to have their needs met. Have you noticed that? Are you needy? Is your partner needy? Have you formed a relationship? And is there conflict? And is there conflict because they're no longer fulfilling your needs or you're no longer fulfilling their needs? Realize you become attached. And by your attachment, neediness has risen. And there's nothing in my mind I would hate. You know, I can remember being in the hospital when I had my hip replaced. Both times the nurses would say, you are like the most independent person. Most of the people who come in here are very needy. I want you to know that I've chosen to be as independent as I can in my life. I do ask for support when I need it, but for the most part, I'm very capable of fulfilling my needs. I have the information in me, but I do ask support sometimes when I don't have it. Remind me of my truth. Remind me that I'm whole and perfect. Remind me that divine wisdom is flowing through me. Remind me to just stop and listen. Because what we understand is attachment creates codependency. And the only cure for a codependent relationship is simply to become unattached. It's not easy because you programmed yourself to respond and behave in this way. But if you do it, you will set yourself free. This is an affirmation from Ernest Holmes. And for me, it says so much. I invite you to make this an affirmation that you do. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Think about that. One life, infinite, everywhere present, all wise, all powerful. Perfect balance in every aspect, nothing missing. That is the life of the infinite. You and I are one with the infinite. Therefore, our life and its life are the same life, and our life and its life are perfect. Attachment takes us out of the realization of our perfection. I invite you to try this affirmation and say it with feeling, say it with meaning. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. I want to thank you for joining me today. And if you enjoy this message and you want to plug into Agape, just go to agapespiritualcenter.com. And you can go to the calendar and you can see all of the events that we put out there online and in person. We are a global and a local spiritual community that teaches how to better self-love through conscious living. We're about forming a group of conscious individuals to go through this life in an expansive way. Because you're watching this, I know you're a vibrational match and I'd love to get to know you and have you plug in. Also, if this message resonated with you, make a donation, support us as we continue to bring this message to people all over the world. Your support allows us to do that. We value, I value, all that you give, because without you, we couldn't make this message available to those who seek it. With that, I know your life and God's life is perfect. Make it so. 
just for you. Aloha.